What's up guys, welcome to another video where in this one we're going to be talking about the Changed Ages Aura. Now for those of you who don't know what the Ages Aura is, I'm going to quickly tell you about it and then we'll go and talk about whether it's worth using and in the experiences that I had when I was testing it on stream, actually just literally before I just ended stream and I'm recording this video. But if you find the video useful, if you enjoy it or you're new around here, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel like I say if you are new. But otherwise, let's get started. Okay, so the Aegis Aura, what exactly is it? In the past, the Aegis Aura would block damage incoming towards yourself, but it would cap at 80,000 damage. What this meant was once you actually blocked the 80,000 damage, it would just end the aura. So the aura was 30 minutes long and it would block 10% of every single hit that you got. It would block 10% damage and you just wouldn't take that damage, right? But once it did block a total of 80,000, that was it. The aura ended, which made it pretty damn useless. However, to get the aura, you have to buy it off of the loyalty store and it does cost you 84,000 loyalty points. Now, for those of you who don't know, loyalty points is what you get for being a member in the game. And the way this works is you will start off getting 500 loyalty points on your first month. And the longer you stay a member, the more loyalty points you're going to get each month as well. So your base loyalty points will go up each month. Uh, I'll link the wiki page for this in the description to make it a little bit easier. You can just go there and check that and it'll show you how much you actually get. The highest you can get every single month is 30,000 points. That is the highest you can get once you've been a member and I believe you have to be a member for over a year consecutively for that to actually give you all of those points. So as you can imagine, 84,000 loyalty points is a hell of a long time to actually accumulate all of that, especially for someone who has been a new member. I do believe if you get premium membership, you get a big chunk of points earned straight away. I'm not exactly sure on the amount, but it would probably be enough to buy this outright. That being said, for 84,000 loyalty points, I wouldn't spend them on this straight away. There's many other things that you can actually get that are going to help you out a lot more, like other auras, skilling auras, all this sort of stuff, uh, than if you just buy this outright. Like, it's it's definitely better to spend this on other stuff, skilling auras, accuracy auras, other, other sort of stuff. And then eventually, maybe one day you'll grab this, right? But... That's one thing to mention, and that's why I to talk about that before we got into, like, how does the aura actually perform? So, there's a lot of loyalty points. Keep that in mind. So, in the past, the aura was absolutely worthless, wasn't worth getting, don't bother, absolutely trash. However, now, the aura doesn't have a cap on how much damage it can block. So, what this means is the aura now blocks 10% damage for the entire duration, and it will not end no matter what. This is just a flat 10% damage reduction aura, which is pretty interesting. But does that mean it's actually worth using, well... Let's get into that now. Keep in mind, this is still a very expensive aura and I would still suggest buying it much later when you actually have nothing really, nothing else to buy with loyalty points. So next up, we are going to be talking about some certain bosses that I tested this out at and give you my thoughts on how the aura can be useful and go from there. I just want to clarify that I actually did this in lower level gear. You're going to see me doing this in uh, Gatnodermic Armor and I'm going to be using Animate Dead and then I'm going to be using pretty much just tier 85 dual wield weapons. Now, I am using an Essence of Finality with the Gothic Staff and I'm using the Zook Cape. Throughout the video, I tested different things like not using the Zook Cape, not using the Essence of Finality. They didn't make much difference except for slower kill times and stuff and I wasn't really looking into it into how fast can I kill a boss. I was looking into it in the fact that for a low level player with not ridiculously high power armor and all this sort of stuff where DPS matters, will this make killing bosses easier? That's kind of the goal with this and what I wanted to get from it, so that's what we're going to discuss. With that being said, I started out at Karapak Hard Mode. Karapak Hard Mode, I only went here. Again, I wouldn't recommend it because you're going to get 10 minute kill times and that is what I got and I have experience at this boss. I wouldn't recommend killing Karapak Hard Mode in this gear. That being said, I wanted to see if the Aegis Aura made a difference here when I'm just using Ganodermic and Animate Dead than if I use something else instead. I wanted to know if it made the fight a lot easier, if I could get through and not have to worry about like food and stuff and what how much is 10 percent basically through this fight what i noticed from here was it wasn't really any different than using a vampiric aura after testing it with the Aegis Aura, the Vampiric Aura, and Dark Magic Aura, one, I would recommend fully that you just use the DPS Aura, the Dark Magic Aura at least, uh, if you're not using like a Maniacal, uh, as the kill was three minutes faster. But when I used the Vampiric Aura and the Aegis Aura 
food was more or less the exact same as when I used the Dark Magic Aura. 10% didn't make a huge difference. Phase 4 was a lot more chill and like less worryful and stressful. However, it did take longer to complete it, meaning that eventually I would have to spend a lot longer thinking about defensive rotations and all this sort of stuff. The DPS Aura helps you get through that phase quicker, and yes, you still need to use offensives, but you spend a lot less time killing the clones, and so you don't have to constantly rotate your defensives as long. So the takeaway from Karapak in hard mode is it makes it more chill, but you're still going to have to pay more attention to defensive rotations in the last phase. Uh, you use about the same amount of food, but it takes three minutes or between two and three minutes longer to actually get the kill. So yes, you do notice the damage difference, the reduction difference, but not enough where I would suggest using that over a DPS aura. Next up, I went to Zamorak. I wanted to test this out there, but again, I only did this in 50% Enraged because we are looking at this from a lower geared, lower like, experienced player's perspective, right? I don't want to be like, oh yeah, we're going to do 100%, we're going to do 200% because it doesn't make a difference. At that point, you want to be using probably Crib Bloom and DPS gear to help you get through. Like, You're not going to be used, doing this in tier 85s. That's just silly. You're not doing 100% Zami or plus in tier 85 dual world magic. You could you could do it. It's not worth it though. So I'm not going to look at it at that point. However, we went to Zami. We used the tier 85s, and my takeaway from this was it made no difference whatsoever. Now the reason it makes no difference whatsoever is it doesn't give you enough to be able to just soul split the entire thing and not have to pray a flick. So you still have to pray a flick, right? Even with Ganondorf and Animate Dead and the Age of Sora, you have to you have to pray a flick. But if you pray a flick and you do it properly, then you don't need to use any food. You can do the whole of the 50% kill absolutely foodless in this gear um, without without the Aegis Aura anyway. So Zamorak really didn't make a difference. I also tried this on Vampiric Aura. Again, you can't uh, like just soul split the entire thing. You still have to soul split and you can do that without anything else. Like it doesn't make it any more AFK or chill or like worry, worryful or whatever. It's exactly the same. So you might as well use a DPS Aura like Dark Magic or Majorat. That way you get a faster kill and you still have to do just as much effort. It doesn't reduce the effort here so again zami and below 100 percent rage doesn't make a difference it might be useful so we'll have to test it at higher rages i can't do the higher rages so personally i can't test this the next place i went was elite dungeons 3 i ran the full dungeon in the same gear with the ages aura active it was easy it didn't make a difference uh one place that this thing did shine though was at Taraket. and this is where i kind of noticed how this aura could be really useful Taraket was a piece of cake with this i didn't really use any food in fact i don't think i used any food to kill Taraket with this gear i teleported out at the end so i could test it in other stuff and test a few other things out chat wanted me to test if i could just completely afk Taraket, and we'll get to that in just a second but overall this kill was super easy and the aegis aura did make a difference over the vampirism aura the reason being is these skeletons and all the extra addition and like additional monsters that are going to be hitting you here having 10 percent damage reduced from every single hit actually makes a difference in comparison to just having your own dps given back to you as life points so when you are being piled by loads of different monsters this is when the Aegis Aura seems to shine and actually make a difference better than the Vampirism Aura. So at Taraket, hell yes, this aura is pretty damn useful. That being said, I then came back in Crypt Bloom with the Aegis Aura on and I used my tier 95s and I used whatever, like my, my high level gear, right? Uh, chat wanted me to check if this meant you could just AFK Taraket. What I did was I still use full manual because I didn't want to set up a revo bar, but I didn't touch any defensives. I didn't do anything but target Taraket. And then all I did was just attack Taraket through this entire fight. I didn't change target to the, the portals. I ignored the portals. I didn't use my undead slayer. I didn't do anything. I didn't kill the bloats or anything like that. All I did was just follow Taraket around, attacking him, even when he was invulnerable, just stayed on him. And we completely did this fight with no food only using soul split no defensives piece of cake it was absolutely fine the aegis aura with all those skeletons like piling up on us it reduced so much damage that on top of the animate dead and the crib bloom that it it, it really did make a difference you could tell it made a difference because it, we managed to do this with no effort whatsoever that being said if you set up a revolution bar properly you could afk taraket with this setup completely because you could add your defenses reflect debilitate uh, all this sort of stuff to your actual revolution bar and you could just literally click on Taraket, 
go AFK, go get a coffee, go get a cup of tea, get a snack, come back, and then continue on with your dungeon. I have no doubt this would work consistently if you set up the right revolution bar. Maybe someone can test it out and let me know if you can figure it out. Let me know in the comments. Next up, we got to the Ambassador. Ambassador was an interesting one because I tested this in the Aegis Aura again. I tested it with Vampiric Aura. And I also did another kill with, with the Aegis Aura and not using the Zook Cape. Like, I, I made the fight differently. It, it didn't make a difference. With the Aegis Aura and Ganodermic and Animate Dead, the, the kill here isn't that big of a deal. If you know your defensives for the, the, the spinners bit where he does the big explosions afterwards because I couldn't kill all of them in time anyway. Um, you can just defensive through it. You can resonance the first one. You can use reflex and debilitate on the second one. You shouldn't get more than three or whatever. At one point I got four. Use barricade as well. It's not the end of the world. You can get through these. But the fire of the ambassador was pretty chill. I didn't really use a ton of food. It was pretty good at the end and I teleported out again so I could test other things. You can definitely do this in Vampiric Aura and the Aegis Aura and they both have the same results. The kill times are pretty slow. I wouldn't suggest it. But if you just want to do it just to get a kill, maybe, then, hey, you can definitely do this. But overall, the Aegis Aura didn't make any difference here to the Vampiric Aura. The next place I went to was Zook. Zook was something I wanted to test because after doing Taraket and noticing a difference there, I thought this could probably work pretty well at Zook as it is going to be reducing the damage from everything in the room rather than Vampiric Aura only healing you from the DPS you're dealing to the single target at the time. So I did the run with a Vampiric Aura first as that was enabled from the previous testing at the Ambassador and it worked fine just as you would expect. It was fine, it wasn't a problem, uh, it was okay. Then I changed to the Aegis Aura and I noticed a pretty good difference. I noticed that I used a lot less food as I got towards the same point in the fight. The waves didn't really feel anywhere near as punishing. I still used defenses in between them. I used Devotion here and there, I used Reflect here and there, just like I did with the Vampiric Aura, but I got a lot further without using anywhere near as much food it was much more chill it was easier so i would recommend for anybody going for their cape their first normal mode cape and they're using like vampiric aura and tank armor to get through i would suggest changing to the aegis aura instead if you have access to it i wouldn't buy it just for this but if you have access to it the aegis aura is now technically better here from what i can tell because it reduces damage from every single hit you take rather than just healing you for the little bit that you normally would heal from you're still going to use food because you don't have that vampiric aura are healing you uh, and i didn't use any safe spots by the way i just ran around like a maniac killing things off i used like the odd little like corner here and there but nothing like oh this is the safe spot where i can soul split or anything like that i just ran around killed stuff changed my prayers when i needed to i uh, didn't use soul split and we got through nice and easy it was pretty chill it definitely made a difference here on zook himself the same would apply at Zook, Vampiric Aura on Zook himself would be better because you're only taking damage from one target. If you're using the Aegis Aura on Zook, you're still going to get that 10% damage reduction and this is great, but for the Zook fight itself, Vamp Aura would be better. So weigh up the costs, are you using more food during the Zook fight or is the place where you're using more food during the actual waves? You could even switch them out, I suppose, if you wanted to. You could use the Aegis Aura for the waves and then use Vamp Aura for Zook. But at the end of the day, guys, it is still better to use a DPS aura, such as Dark Magic or Majorant, especially if you don't want to take any extra damage from using like Maniacal or something like that. Okay, so that is the bosses that I tested on. Now, I just want to mention that this would still work in places where you use Vampirism Aura to AFK bosses. If you're AFKing a boss somewhere like at Vindicta or at Hellweir and using Vamp Aura on top of Soul Split and like Tank Armor with Animate Dead, you could just rotate these out. You could use this aura as a second aura that you don't have to use a reset for to then continue AFKing the boss. If you use Vampora and then you would just reset it afterwards and use Vampora again and reset it again and just keep repeating that, you can now use Vampora, then use Aegis, then use Vampora, then use Aegis. So that's kind of useful in one way, I suppose, that it does help you out of that. Overall though, my fully finished verdict on the aura, in my opinion, from my testing, I'm sure there could be different uses that come out of somewhere from the top tier PVMers that are like, holy crap, Aegis works really uniquely in this place, then hey, that's pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing if people do take advantage of it. But my actual thoughts on it seems to be, if you're doing content where you're being hit by many different units, for example, Slayer, then the Aegis Aura will probably be better as you are taking reduced damage from every target rather than just healing off of the single target. The Aegis does seem to also outheal the vampirism healing you would get from using AoE. And also if you've got Soul Split and then you're reducing damage as well, it'll probably be better. As for actual bossing though, anything with a single target, you could just use Aegis or you could use vampirism. 
it doesn't seem to really make a difference. They seem more or less exactly the same on the damage reduction or the um, extra health that it does actually provide. So it doesn't. It just kind of weighs up the same way. But anywhere that you are being piled by units, for example, Taraket or a Zuck during the waves, it does seem to actually have a benefit because you're reducing damage from all the actual sources. However, do I think the Aegis Aura is worth buying? For 84,000 loyalty points, unless you have nothing else to buy, I would suggest giving it a skip. It doesn't seem all that worth it right now, and you could get a Vampirism Aura for 5,000 marks of war from the Wars Retreat shop. They do more or less the same thing at the end of the day. There's a few unique situations where the Aegis Aura could be useful, but at the end of the day, you you, you don't want to spend 84,000 loyalty points when you could just spend 5,000 marks of war. If you have nothing else to buy with loyalty points and you've got loads and loads of them, then buy it. Why not? It's another aura. It's pretty useful. But keep in mind, it is also a tier 4 aura, so if you want to reset it, then you have to use a tier 4 uh, aura reset as well, which is higher than a Maniacal Aura, which is tier 3. But anyway, that is my verdict on the Aegis Aura. What do you guys think? Have you tested it out as well? Have I missed anything? If I have, let me know and I will pin your comment uh, where it could be maybe really useful. But I appreciate you all watching the video. I hope you all found it helpful and useful. But other than that, channel members, your names are on screen right now and the Patreon subscribers as well. You guys support the channel more than you know. You keep me full time, especially right now with the ad rates all over the freaking place. I don't know what's going on, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you all so, so much. But otherwise, I I appreciate everybody else watching as well and i will catch you all in the next one see you later guys bye